Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at a very familiar piece of circuitry and that's the Astable multivibrator. So let's start as we usually do with these things by having a look at the circuit diagram. The Astable multivibrator then, uh, Astable of course meaning A-stable, in other words not stable. Uh, circuits probably going to look quite familiar to you it is a very common circuit indeed uh, essentially we've got two transistors uh, and they sort of work against each other so when transistor q1 is on q2 will be off and vice versa uh, but when q1 does come on the um, capacitor above q1 begins to charge uh, when it charges up sufficiently it turns q2 on and in the process that turns q1 off and that process keeps on repeating and we get something which um, uh, sort of looks like a square wave the frequency is controlled mainly by the value of the capacitance but also um, slightly by the resistors as well um, really simple circuit uh, on the breadboard it looks simply like this so i've got the two transistors there and I've got them uh, facing opposite ways so that the two emitter leads are connected together and then there's a yellow jumper goes up to the um, negative uh, rail uh, and then the resistors are actually reversed to what you're seeing on the circuit board just simply if it's easy to do it that way so the two um, center two resistors on the breadboard are actually the 1k resistors going from the collectors of the true transistors then you can see the two ceramic discs the 100 nano um, capacitors and the associated 10k resistor going up to the positive line so let's lay it on the circuit board let's uh, now go to the bench and see it in action okay here we've got the Astable circuit built on the breadboard as per the description just now along with the the circuit diagram and it's set up here in my what I'm going to call kit built lab so I've got my DC adjustable power supply here it's about six and a half volts roughly and that to power supply is powering the board here it's also powering the um, frequency counter here and I've got my DSO 130 oscilloscope here which runs off a, a standard USB 5 volt charger so that's plugged in there um, so the um, circuit is on and should be running so let's start by attaching the frequency counter that's connected to uh, ground there and this is the input and I've just taken a blue wire across here which is the output signal so I'll connect that up and that's saying 3.146 um, kilohertz or 314 well 3140 hertz something like that it's uh, drifting about by a few hertz so that's that's the signal so let's verify I really have got that by um, by attaching the oscilloscope so I've got the ground attached here so let's attach the oscilloscope center probe to exactly the same place as the signal generator and we've got our square wave up there now I'm going to move to a camera position so you can see the square wave for the next part so I'll just do that and come back okay so you can hopefully see the um, frequency counter there about 3.13 um, kilohertz and here's the trace on the scope so let's just um, see how long the wavelength is according to the scope so we've got about one two three four five six and i'm going to say about 6.3 something like that let's guess at 6.3 divisions so 6.3 divisions times the time base which is 50 microseconds so that's 50 times 10 to the minus 6 gives us a, a period of 3.15 times 10 to the minus 4 we'll take the reciprocal of that should give us the frequency and that says 3174 now bear in mind i'm guessing the parts of that because i haven't got access to any cursors on this scope um 3174 3132 yeah i'm about i don't know 50 hertz out something like that so i think that's that's pretty good really so while you can see the scope trace quite well what i'm now going to do is i'm going to take the scope lead off the output and i'm going to attach it to the base of one of the transistors it doesn't really matter which one to be honest um, but we've got that um those that, that square wave 
So if I attach it to the base of one of the transistors, like so, we now get quite a different trace. And what you've got going on here is you've got the charging cycle there of the capacitor. So what's going on here is, as the other transistor um, switches on, so it forces this right-hand transistor off, the, the, the capacitor at its base, the 100 nanofarad capacitor, begins to charge again. Char you can see a slight curve to the charge. Uh, when it reaches the point where it can switch the transistor on, it does so, and at that point it stops charging because the other capacitor is now effectively charging, and at the point that that charges, uh, it switches this transistor off. So what you're seeing there is the charging cycle, which is governing the output. So that's the base of the transistor and that is the collector of the transistor and both transistors are doing the same thing they're just doing it um, uh, 180 degrees out of phase so to speak and that's what produces our square wave okay i'm just going to show you another bit of kit built test equipment which has been seen before i will make sure all the videos are linked in the description. I'll try and put them up top of the screen as well. I don't know how many I'm going to get over there. But this is the Mitch Electronics Logic Probe that I built, and I built it into this little um, plastic um, tube, which uh, my good lady very kindly provided me. So yellow light means the probe is on. Uh, red is Logic Zero. Green is Logic One. So we have got... Um, the kind of thing you might find in a computer as a clock signal here. It's a bit too fast to display on the Logic Probe, but what I can do is I can touch the Logic Probe onto negative and we're going to get Logic 1 there, which is the red. Yeah. And if I go on to the positive supply, which is Logic... Uh, sorry, that's Logic 0, which is the red, and go on to the positive one there, Logic 1, I get a green. Um, and if I go on to the output here, what we actually should get is both lighting up. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, we've got both lighting up, which indicates that there's pulsing going on that the logic probe is detecting. So that's yet another bit of kit built um, test equipment uh, that we can use in an application like this. Okay, um, finished obviously showing you the um, master ball multi vibrator, but there are a couple more kits that it's worth men mentioning. We've got the uh, variable uh, DC power supply here, that was a Banggood kit. This frequency counter is actually also a kit. It was, um, it uses a, a PIC microcontroller uh, which um, does the frequency counter and then writes to the to the display. I've just put it in a little 3D printed case and I've got a a little bit of uh, dark plastic over the, the display as the, the, the segments of the LED were really bright and quite hard to see uh, but that little bit of smoky plastic um, does the trick. Now a lot of people are going to say yeah well this is all right but there's not really very much protection for the front end and that's quite right effectively that that red wire is going straight in there to one of the pins on the on the microcontroller and obviously um, if you weren't very careful you could damage that so um, it probably needs a few little modifications just to provide a little bit of protection for that uh, that front end but as you can see it's counting frequency and it's doing it uh, very well indeed and the DSO138 um, oscilloscope again um, that was a kit comes in a very nice little box and it's surprisingly good for what it is and you've got various controls here for adjusting time base on the long the top here you've got uh, controls for adjusting the, um, the input for the uh, x-axis. Uh, there's a couple more kits that we've not needed to use um, particularly for this. There is obviously you've already seen the Logic Probe, that's a Mitch Electronics kit. Another Mitch Electronics kit is this one uh, which is the Analog Explorer and again I'll, I'll put a link to all this stuff in but this kit um, has got a number of little, if you like, experiments on and a load of test points. And not only is this a nice kit to build for a beginner, uh, it also um, starts to explain to you um, the way integrators and differentiators work. And we've got a Schmidt trigger there doing some oscillating and uh, got a couple of 555s as well. So there's some interesting stuff on there and that's a nice easy, easy kit to build. 
The other thing that's uh, worth getting perhaps is the signal generator and this goes from about 1 hertz up to 1 megahertz. Um, again another kit, very inexpensive. It produces triangle and sine waves, uh, it also produces square waves. Um, they're not the best waveforms in the world uh, but when you think what you've got there, little signal generator, actually um, surprisingly good. So that's my little um, kit built lab. Uh, what I will do is I'll do a little summary of the, the prices of all these things and you can see uh, what's what. Um, now one of the reasons I picked the uh, Astable uh, multivibrator as, as an example to show here with the kit built lab is that this breadboard and all those components along with a load of other components this breadboard itself and the components were part of a Banggood kit a little sort of beginners electronics kit with uh, resistors, capacitors, a breadboard, um, connectors a little plastic um, container full of uh, jumper wires um, all came in uh, rather a nice little um, plastic box um, I've since separated them into drawers so I can get um, the resistors easily but everything there um, was actually a very modest price but I'll show you that um, uh, on screen in a moment uh, so there we go Astable multivibrator being powered by kit built power supply and being tested and measured on uh, kit built test instruments okay well there you have the Astable uh, multivibrator circuit hopefully it's uh, made some sense. Uh, it is a very familiar circuit and uh, lots and lots of applications and a little bit different to see it uh, uh, set up and used uh, in the kit built lab. Talking of the kit built lab let's just have a quick look at the um, costs of those various bits and total them up. Okay details of the kit built lab then. So the um, kits that we were using today the um, DC power supply kit was a £7.77, that was a bang good item I think. Uh, the frequency counter kit was uh, £6.50, I got that off uh, eBay. Uh, the oscilloscope I think came from Banggood, that was £15 at the time, again a kit. And the electronics component kit from which we built the Bastable was £11.50. Now there's plenty of components in there so there's quite a lot of things that uh, you could build that kit contains transistors, it contains some diodes, it contains LEDs, uh, resistors, capacitors, uh, some connectors and a little uh, and obviously a breadboard and a, a little device to allow you to power the breadboard from a, a power supply should you so wish. Uh, so the grand total there it comes to £40.77 at the time I bought these things that works out with uh, exchange rates as um, as per today at just over $50, uh, call it $51. If you add in the um, extra things that I mentioned, that's the logic probe, the signal generator and the analog explorer kits, uh, that gives us a total of uh, £61.44, which is uh, about 76 and 3 quarter dollars So I think um, to have an electronics lab with the ability to do all that for that kind of price, um, is quite remarkable. So it's possible then to actually assemble um, some gear at, at a very reasonable price and I guess probably quite a few of you are now thinking yeah but it's not really very capable gear is it and you're quite right I'm not under any illusions about that you know I've got much get much better gear sitting behind me uh, but there is a value to this that you can't measure in pounds or dollars and that is the fact that you actually built it and you're using something that you actually um, helped to make uh, and not only is that a good feeling it's also very good practice from an electronic point of view it gets you practice in soldering and possibly uh, fault finding if things don't work out correct first time so I think it's a, a thoroughly good idea and uh, yeah the stuff does work it's maybe not the best but it does work now there's one thing missing and that's um, a means of measuring 
uh, voltage and current resistance even capacitance perhaps um, and that's because quite honestly um, multimeters di modern digital multimeters are so cheap and so good that I don't think you could better it with any kind of kit I don't I don't know of one um, the local the discount supermarket was selling um, an auto ranging digital multimeter a couple of weeks back for just under 10 pounds and a friend across the field has got one it's absolutely excellent it's really good that would be more than good enough um, from from a hobbyist point of view so yeah there's lots of good stuff out there if you're going to get something like one of the the kiwaits meters that you've heard me go on about before uh, they've got the ability to measure their capacitance and also frequency so you would um, probably in a far better way than my little uh, kit built frequency counter would so yeah it doesn't have to cost a lot of money um, yeah it can do but it doesn't have to and um, I can't really put a price on the enjoyment of building your stuff and then using it I think that's really good hope you've enjoyed the video and learnt a bit about Astable multivibrators um, if you have please click the thumbs up and consider subscribing that would really help if you're in the market for a meter check out the links below for the Kiwitz meters if you use the code that you'll find in the description you'll get some discount and that helps the channel if you've already done that thank you very much and i look forward to seeing you on the next video